Hello everybody, welcome to That's Football and it's big news this Thursday morning as Mikel Arteta is signing a three-year contract at Arsenal. Surely, get in the comments, is there an Arsenal fan out there that isn't happy about this? Because I tell you what, I don't know why, I, I, I've, well, I do know why the videos are there. Arteta and print your t-shirts. It was a weird thing with Arteta and I think a lot of non-Arsenal fans probably felt this as well. Arsenal were coming out of this obsession with screaming and shouting outside the ground, Wenger out, Emery out, Arteta out. They'd got locked into this cycle of we're a great football club, we're not where we should be, we should be winning the treble every year, we should be winning the Champions League every year despite never winning it anyway and they got locked into this spiral of just shouting negativity. Arteta comes in, they try to get rid of him, some of their fans, they print their t-shirts, they're screaming Arteta out but from an outside point of view, it was very obvious, and a lot of Arsenal fans picked up on it as well, to be fair, that there was a change at Arsenal and that it was going to take a long time. Arsene Wenger's last Premier League title was, what, 2004? Um, this, this gap was getting bigger and bigger. And for 15 years of failure, it was going to take some time to turn the ship around. And you could see that what needed to happen was what they did with Arteta, bring somebody in who has a style of football that is going to be amenable to Arsenal fans because they want that after the Wenger years. But also, let's get rid of some of the big-time Charlies. Let's get rid of some of the social media players. Let's get rid of some of the influence in that dressing room that is, you know, the big voice in the dressing room but not good enough on the pitch. And, and those players were removed. The Ob Aubameyangs, the Ozils, a few others went as well. And, and, and it's not happened at my club, Man United. It's a very rare thing that a manager can come in and be given that freedom to do it. And on top of that, younger players were given a chance, better recruitment, structure around the manager. And it didn't instantly work. And I think that's why there was this Arteta out movement there, because they felt oh, it's more the same. Oh, here we go again. We're an embarrassment. But... He did win an FA Cup, correct me if I'm wrong, very, very quickly. Well, Arsenal win the FA Cup. That's not enough. Arteta out. And then you had that season where from being predicted to be nowhere near the top four, they suddenly finished second and suddenly that Arteta movement is ahead of plan. And I always felt that the season where they finished second, the season before last, they were ahead of schedule. I don't think they'd completed their first 11. And I think to compete with Man City, you need a good first 11 and you need a good bench. Last season, they were better, even better, better recruitment. Declan Rice came in as well. Some of the better players like Odegaard and Saka and Saliba were growing into, you know, arguably world-class players. And they got really close, two points off Manchester City. And then we are where we are now. Um, obviously, they're going to be up there again. And now Arsenal have gone in a very short period of time under Arteta from laughing stocks to, well, they'll definitely finish second. And and that, second's nowhere. You want to win titles. But that improvement that Arteta has shown from Arsenal, from taking the job to where they are now, to be established as the second best team in England and respected and understood to be that. And what that means is you go to Villa Park, you go to Newcastle, you go to Spurs, and you are technically favourites to win. And to put Arsenal back into that category against the juggernaut that is Manchester City is remarkable. And therefore, I, I don't think anybody could look at this and go that this is a bad move for Arsenal, giving them a three-year contract. If anything, I was a little bit concerned that the stories around Barcelona last sort of winter were potentially problematic if Arteta's desire, being Spanish himself, was to go and manage Barcelona, which is a huge club. So I think, actually, for Arsenal to pin him down on a three-year contract, you're not doing him a favour. I think it's a very mutual relationship where respect works both ways. Um, I think it would be looking at the next three years for Arsenal. What, you know, tell me your comments on what you think about him actually staying and getting that contract, but also what's got to be achieved over the next three years, because we can wax lyrical about, you know, what he's done. And as an outsider, I could see what he was trying to do, but doing it, it has been incredible and that's why when all the Arteta out people were there I was going actually I think I can see what he's trying to do and he has done it which again with Manchester United it's not actually that easy to see what Ten Hag's trying to do I think it's a hard job but it's not that easy whereas with Arteta I could see what he was trying to do you know the first sort of period of time was just make them hard to beat and then he started to try and build a team in the vision that he wanted to build but 
over the next three years, I've said it before, I think with Arsenal, if, if they come out of this period of growth, because no growth lasts forever, there will be other clubs coming through. Maybe it'll be Liverpool. Hopefully it'll be Man United. Maybe it'll be Chelsea. Who knows? At some point, Arsenal aren't going to stay there waiting for Man City to fail. And what if Man City don't fail? And will Arsenal always be the second best team? I mean, if anything, the, 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 the gap between Man City and Arsenal is bigger than the gap between Arsenal and third place. So if you think Arsenal are going to catch Man City on the same conversation, you've got to say, well, there's a chance that a third place team could topple Arsenal as the second best team. So maintaining that title contender slot for Arsenal won't be easy in itself. But I also think the way football is now with Manchester City, what is success in the Premier League? Everybody wants to win the league, but then we're blind to the fact that Man City have won six of the last seven. It's it's a bit like the Scottish League. It's a bit like the French League. It's a bit like the Bundesliga was. It's, being second best is sometimes the best you can be in a league when you're up against that sort of dominance. So maybe the next three years for Arsenal is being in that seat, waiting, hoping for an opportunity. But I also think that maybe Pep Guardiola leaves. Maybe Man City you know, do get hit by these charges. Maybe Man City do drop off. I think Arsenal, if they come out of this period of finishing second for the last two years and they do drop off, they'll always look back on that and go, we, we should have won a title there. And I think that 100% is not putting pressure onto Arsenal or Arteta. I think they've got to look at the next three years and a Premier League title. And how incredible that would be, because I think it's very, very difficult to do that in the modern game because of the reasons I've just said. But I think that's what they've got to be looking at. Or a Champions League. They've never won the Champions League. And, you know, what's better for Arsenal, a Premier League or a Champions League? So you've got three questions to answer there. Because personally, I think in 2027, Arsenal haven't won the Premier League, but they've won the Champions League. He's done something no one's ever done. And every club's history is different as well. Like, sometimes, as a Man United fan, I've want, I, would, I want the Premier League now more than I'd want another Champions League. We're not even in the bloody Champions League. But there was times where you're winning the Premier League regularly and you want the Champions League. I think for Arsenal, the Champions League, because they've never won it, would be probably more obtainable than the Premier League and yet probably more valuable. So maybe that's what you look at as well. But I think it's a fantastic bit of business for Arsenal. Again, I think it's the right deal for Arteta. It's the right deal for Arsenal. You feel that this project at Arsenal is not finished yet as well. And to walk away from it would be dangerous right now from either party. So there's a story to be told, whether it's going to be continued trajectory towards one of those big trophies or whether it's going to be a, a, a gradual stagnation and drop-off will be interesting. Um, but it's definitely the right decision and it's a good one from Arsenal. Get your comments in below, smash a like on the video. Oh, and please don't forget to check the link in the description, Driving with Goldbridge. It's a bit of a thing. Check it out. It's brand new. It's out today. Link's in the description and it's on my channel as well. Thanks for watching. Take care. Speak to you on the next one.